Good day to you, fine traveller, and welcome to my prospect. John's the name, John Curl. After my death, I became known in this town as the Man of Ross, a title I'm not unhappy with. You might like to hear a bit of a TV interview I gave recently. Good day, Ross, and welcome to the Daily News. And I'm here to tell you more about John Curl. And you're in luck, we have him here today. Yes, you heard him right. We are here at St Mary's Church about me to meet John Curl himself. Now, how about we go meet him? And so, here we are in St Mary's Church about to meet John Curl himself. So John, why did you set up the prospect? I loved Ross and its folk and worked hard to secure for them the best possible existence that could be afforded them. You'll mark my name about the town. You'll also see the results of some of my hard work, which is most gratifying. Some 300 years after, I shuffled off this mortal coil. The prospect, a fine garden, a free place of resort, which sh should ever be a delight and attraction to all frequenting in this element. I established and opened in this place in the year of our Lord, 1700. Some would say you were getting a bit old for this sort of project. It was a hard task to, to perform, and in the 63rd year of my life, there was little hope that I could carry on out these great works unaided. But with the help of my trusty band workers, and not a little cider to keep us in good humour, I raised fine grass plots, hooray, and, and other ornaments as we could devise to make the same a free walking space for the people of Ross uh, and all the other persons who would resort here for their diversion. You mentioned other ornaments. What were they? If you look about your day, you today, you'll see only my handsome gate posts at the main entrance and one of my smaller gates on the north side which has remained intact. I believe you may even have noticed a that there are a certain signature of mine. The centrepiece of this garden was my fountain, alas now but a memory. It was a joy and delight to all who gazed upon it and played in its waters. I should perhaps convey to you, to you that today you can only gaze upon but half of my original prospect. The other half lies beyond the hotel wall. There are, there are plenty about this place who will tell you of the sorry tales that hang around those unfortunate events, so I prefer not to dwell upon them if you don't mind. If you've, all, if you've not already met him, I'm sure that James Barrett will be happy to make your acquaintance. And my dear Judith is around here somewhere. Thank you. But back to your fountain. It was more than just an ornament, wasn't it? Indeed. I constructed a mighty engine down by the river at one mill, by today's hope, an anchor pub. And, and with the aid of my beloved elm trees, whose mighty hollowed out trunks acted like pipes, water was conveyed up the hill to feed my fountain. Similar pipes carried fountain wa fountains water down to the town to quench the thirst of the people of Ross. I can still remember the joy of that day in 1700. Well, thank you, John. That has been most interesting. Yes, there's more I could tell you, but I perceive you must be on your way. There are others who will tell you more about this place and what happened after my days on God's good earth. If it's waterworks you crave, then Thomas Blake would, I am sure, oblige. Look, look about you. Enjoy what remains of my prospect. Fare thee, Robert.